Hello, Hamilton. It's that time again. Get up, get off the couch, start tackling your own to-do list around your own home. I'm Bob Asadorian. Welcome to the Just Ask Bob Show. On today's show, we're going to spray you. We're going to get you wet. Lucky, it's off right now. We're going to talk about hose bibs. We've had a lot of emails, different questions coming in about plumbing. Uh, the summer's just behind us, so we have been talking about hose bibs. Let me go through what your old Hamilton home will most likely have, or at least it did have if it was built as an old Hamilton home. What we've got is a gate valve. Now, these gate valves are not the best way to shut off water or the most e the easiest to use. A gate valve will turn and turn and turn, quite a few turns to turn it on, quite a few turns to turn it off, too many in turns in fact. There's a rubber seal inside, so the problem is whether it's this valve or let's say your bathtub faucet, if it's an original faucet or your kitchen faucet, the old ones, that rubber seal can be over tightened. So anytime you turn it off and you can still feel some turning movement, the rubber's wearing itself out. So I mean, you're not supposed to overturn these. These are the original system. Uh, they don't make sense anymore, although mind you, a lot of homeowners are buying them, a lot of contractors are buying them for one single reason, because they're cheap, not because they're efficient. Let me show you what I like to replace them with. I like to replace them with, let's start with this one for a moment, to just say apples to apples here. This one is a ball valve, so again, it's made with a thread on to a standard garden hose. The other end, in this case, can get a thread on to continue to your half inch copper or IPEX, whatever your home supply is, or you can solder into it. But here's the beauty of this guy. Quarter turn on, quarter turn off. And it's not a compression type of a rubber seal. So these are permanent. These will last a very, very long time. Now again, with these two, you have to have a shut off in the basement. So here's what people email me and they call me about, is there a way to eliminate that leaking shut off? Because again, with the shut offs, they can be a gate valve or they can be a, vault, a ball valve. Now, with both of these units, you've got water supply coming right to the outside of your foundation. So when the winter freeze hits, you have to get in the basement, go all around, wherever those shut offs are, turn them off. There is a better way and I'm gonna show you. This is a gem, this is a beauty, very, very well designed. Now again, we'll show you during the show how we install it, but if we can take a moment to take it apart and analyze it and explain to you why it works well. Okay, let's set it here. Not that difficult to take apart. You know, as a kid, I like to take things apart and learn what makes them tick. The only difference now as an adult is I think most times I should know well enough how to put them back together again. That was my big problem as a kid. So now that's off. Let's unscrew this. Okay, now let me use the pail as an example. This is your home's foundation. Shouldn't quite be this wide. But again, these come in different lengths. So if you have a very old home with a really wide foundation, you need a longer unit. Okay, so in the winter time, we've got 20 below zero here. So these normal ones that we talked about, you have to have a shut off valve on the other side. This one here, as it turns, it will stop the water flow on the warm side. So you don't have to have a shut off valve. That's one less source of a potential leak. Now, I mean, you happen to get a nice mild day in the winter time, no problem at all. From outside your home, quarter turn, you've got water flow, quarter turn off, and it's not shutting the water off right here. Because again, you've still got the cold zone. It turns the water off beyond the foundation's warm side. So again, makes complete sense. Let's set it over here for a moment. And let's talk now about the process of installing it. As we've showed you on many shows before, you have to use a good paste. Without the paste, you will get no penetration when you're soldering. If you don't have any penetration, you've got nothing. You want to do nice, clean solder joints. This is what's going to let the solder suck itself in. So you want to make sure you apply this generously. You have to make sure that you're very, very clean. Your copper connection 
needs to be deburred, it needs to be cleaned with this tool. We'll show you as we go ahead and install the unit. And for your fittings, your caps, your elbows, you need to clean out the inside of the fitting with this. You have to remember, at least when working with copper, you have to be clean. You don't want any fingerprints on there, you want everything cleaned up nicely. This is what you're going to use. You're going to heat it up to the proper temperature. And we're going to show you as soon as it heats, it starts to pull itself in. Copper cutting wheel is also handy. Now again, the basis of this show is for the old Hamilton homes. New homes most likely won't have copper. They're going to have IPEX. So who cares about the new homes? I'm here about the majority of homeowners. We want everybody to understand this is how you work on copper. If your home has IPEX, not a big deal at all. Triple W, just ask Bob, visit the website, send us an email, and we'll make certain on a future show to teach you how to work on IPEX, or I'll follow through with your questions. Now, let's start with the questions. Speaking of questions, the basis for the show. See here. here, Bob, is it easy to install a frost-free hose bib? I'm told that this type of water valve does not need a shutoff valve on the inside of the, uh, the basement on the warm side. Bob, will this not freeze in the winter time? Thanks, John Hamilton, Ontario. Well, John, no, it's not going to freeze on the inside as long as it's the frost-free unit. So let's take a moment here to look at our simulation. Very important that I sort of try to show you the old and the new. In this particular case, we can take this off here. This is just for an illustration. This was from one of my jobs earlier on this week. This is your typical unit. And again, why the odd 45 degree angle? There was a basement window in the way, so they came out and jogged over. So again, this unit is completely exposed. There's going to be water right to this point. If the shutoff is not turned off on the inside of the home, this is going to freeze and burst and you're going to leak. We've got a simulation of your foundation. We've got the block stack. We've got the hole made. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to install the frost-free hose bin. See you in a bit. Cliff Chatterton is a war amputee. Megan was born missing her arms and legs. The bond they share represents the uniqueness of the War Amps, an organization of amputees helping amputees, dating back to the First World War. After World War II, a new generation of War Amputees came back from overseas. The Key Tag Service provided them with jobs. Today, it's a state-of-the-art facility that has returned more than a million sets of lost keys. Donations for key tags fund the association's programs. Cliff Chatterton has been at the helm of the war ramps for more than 40 years. He has dedicated his life to fighting for veterans' rights and improving the lives of amputees. When we came back from World War II, everything was there for us. We had limb service to provide limbs, and we had a strong organization to fight our battles. We said to ourselves, what happens now when a youngster loses a leg? Who is going to speak for these kids? So we started CHAMP. Under his leadership, innovative programs were developed to ease the path for young amputees and their families. We got involved with War Amps when Megan was born, and from there, there hasn't been a low day since. <laughs> Having War Amps backing us means the kids' dreams are always alive. They can do whatever they want to do. I'm not worried about her future. I know that War Amps will always be there. Through Operation Legacy, older members of CHAMP will continue the War Amps tradition of amputees helping amputees. Hello Hamilton, welcome back to the Just Ask Bob show. Let me throw a little shout out to you there. Don't forget, www.justaskbob.com. Whether it's this show, whether you just tuned in or you're in the bathroom or you miss me soldering or teaching you what these different components are, you can pause, fast forward, rewind. We've got the entire season, season one, all 10 shows on our website's YouTube page www.justaskbob.com and you can watch everything. Now a little recap on today's show. We have, we're talking hose bibs. 
So we have gate valve, traditional, authentic, classic Hamilton historical homes versus the very modern uh, frost-free hose bib valve. Big difference with these two as we're going to show you now during the installation process. Okay, now we've got a little bit of a mock-up here. Uh, let's use your imagination, Hamilton. This is your home's foundation. If it's a real old Hamilton home, imagination won't have to stretch that far because your home would have had concrete blocks. Now let's show you one that came off our job site last week. Again, sorry about the odd 45 degree angle, but there was a basement window there and that's how I took her out and we installed an updated one. Now again, with these ones here, as you can see by the nature of it, once it's shut off, your water is right up to here. So again, 20-25 below zero, the cold weather will penetrate the block or poured concrete foundation and you will freeze. So on the opposite side, there will always be a shut off valve. Now this guy, as you've seen before the break, we took it apart. The beauty of this is that it stops the water flow on the warm side of the basement. Now as far as installing it, we've already got the hole made. What you have to remember when installing this is, you don't want it level, you don't want it leaning that way, you want it a very slight slope downward. So once you shut off the water flow, any little bit of uh, you know, residual water in there will exit. So in order to accomplish that, we're going to put it in, we're going to force it down, and then we're going to stick a shim on the other side. So remember now, Hamilton, this is about imagination. That's your basement, this is outside in your driveway, or your backyard. So we're going to force the shim in, that's it, she's locked, she's on the proper slope. Because as you turn it off, there's always going to be a little bit of water left in there, you want it to exit. Now, last season we did almost a whole show on tap cons. In this particular case, you know, we talked about the tap con anchors last season. The tap con anchor comes in two different sizes. This is the large, because you want to use the large in this case. We've gone deep as well. And I chose the hex head, because obviously we're not compressing into wood. I want the hex head because it has a flat washer built in. That flat washer is what's going to sink it against here. So let's start getting these put in. Obviously, I've already pre-drilled a hole, for those of you that remember the TAPCON show. We talked a lot about when you really want strength, if you're driving in the concrete, you want to use a socket. Okay, let's get the other one in the same way. Now. I want to take a moment to show how you can be creative with your mistakes. If you really focus in on the hole here, and again, this can be you at home learning this. I'm a little bit off with the hole. The hole should have been a little bit this way. So by installing a washer, you're going to still get a perfectly tight fit. See, the washer catches it on both sides. If your hole's a little bit large, exterior high quality, exterior caulking, you want to go right around it, but by using a long screw, this is in and it's in solid. We've got it sloped the right way. Now we're going to take a moment and come on this side. And let's go over a few items with you. Now, again, you're in the basement now. You're in your home's basement. You've got two choices. This way is your house plumbing. Now, at least for this show, we're assuming you've got copper. Half inch copper it should be. Now, just like the whole reason that we chose a ball valve and not a gate valve, you're now left with the same choice on the inside. Do you want to install a gate valve, which again, you've got to turn and turn and turn, and then turn, keep turning. And again, this, if it's over squeezed, it will end up leaking. So in the case, but obviously now with the frost-free unit, this doesn't apply. The frost-free unit does not need a shutoff valve. Now if you happen to go with still a, still a nice ball valve, but it's not the frost-free unit, you have choices here. So on this side, if you do have to use the shutoff, again, the number one problem that I find, I replace these all the time. This design, if you don't turn it on and off every month or so, it seizes. And then that one time when you need to turn it off, it's going to drip. It's most common in toilets. 
When I go to somebody's home to replace their toilet, the very first thing I check is the shut off valve. And you know, you turn it off and then you turn it back on and it starts dripping. So again, I do not recommend these at all. You want to use a ball valve. So you're going to fasten it on. On is with the direction of the flow. Off turns off the water. This is important. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to get the torch going. We're going to teach you how to solder these shutoff valves on. How you doing, Jack? Couldn't be better. How you doing, Jack? Couldn't be better. How you doing, Jack? Couldn't be better. What? Just thinking about Jack over there. <laughs> Doesn't he ever have anything important to do? What? Hey, Max. How you doing? Couldn't be better. Where are you going? Over next door to play. Well, I can play with you. It's OK, Dad. I know you're busy. Give your family everything. Give them your time. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. In Narcotics Anonymous, I learned that it is possible to stop using drugs. I don't have to do it alone. Call Narcotics Anonymous. Welcome back to the Just Ask Bob Show. Today we're teaching you everything you ever want to know about shutoff valves. Gate valves, ball valves, hose bibs, spraying the water out of there. In a couple of minutes, we're gonna continue where we left off. We're gonna get to the soldering. We're gonna get the torch turned on. But I wanna take this moment for one of Bob's top picks. Crown Rust Spray. Now this particular one is the solvent free, the penetrating solution. The other one they have is what Crown's obviously known for, which is rust proofing vehicles. Now not only have I used it on my vehicles for the last uh, 18, 19 years, but I've also used this on my tools. Now if you want to know how Bob takes care of his tools, keep them from rusting, keep them lubed, keep them easily and nicely working, it's with the crown. Now obviously more people have heard of WD-40. Everybody knows WD-40. Now take it from me, not only do I work in home improvements, but as a hobby, I work on my vehicle, I work on cars, trucks, taking things apart. Actually, let me tell you a funny story. Uh, this was during uh, season one. Uh, Greg, who films us over here, one of his uh, lights didn't want to uh, retract. It was the sliding pole. I gave it a little bit of a loop. Let me show you right now what I did to it. Now this guy over here, very difficult to come loose. The light didn't want to slide. Is it sliding nice now or what? Let me show you what we did. We'll extend all the way to the top. And when it comes to crown, believe me, a little bit goes a long way. Just get a little bit on there. The important thing is to get it right around here. That's it, it's all about the penetration. You want it to get all the way in, and then turn the lever, up, down, up, down, tighten it up again. Now these threads in here, it'll be very easy. I mean, Greg's a strong guy, but he says to me, Bobby, look, you're the contractor. I can't get this loosened for the life of me. Grab a screw screwdriver, grab your water pump pliers. I just grabbed that. It means a little bit of an effort, but I did it easily. But again, I am a contractor. No worries. Use Crown. I highly recommend it. And again, ask for it by name. That's my top pick based on my 10 years experience as a contractor and 15 years working in the industry. Now, let's get back to the soldering. Okay, we left off. Again, Hamilton, imagination time. This is your foundation, 12 inch concrete block. This is your basement. That's your hose bib outside. So we've come on the inside here. We get the safety glasses ready in a moment. Now this is about keeping clean. Now for this one here, let's start on this side because this is old school. This is going to be the one that actually needs a shut off valve. So look at that old copper. Watch what you want to do to it. You want to twist and twist. 
clockwise and counterclockwise. Now get ready for this. That's what I call clean. If you don't see it like that, don't solder it. You're not going to get any penetration. The solder is not going to pull in to seal the joint. Now, where's our shutoff valve? That's a gate valve, no good. Let's do the nice one. It's bad enough we got a gate valve on the outside. Let's use a nice ball valve on this side. And always remember, here's the water flow. The handle's in the direction of the flow. Opposite of the flow, you've got it off. Here's the second tool we're going to use. Really important, I can't stress this enough. You have to be clean. Both sides. Now always solder with the valve open. If you don't solder with the valve open, you're going to damage the internal components. So keep it open. Now we're going to put some paste on. Generous amount of paste. Get that on. Now again, back to the imagination. This is the supply on your house side. So again, it could be coming horizontal, it could be coming vertical. You want to clean it really good. Apply some paste again. Fit it in. There we go. Get the safety glasses on. Get our wire ready. Time to have fun. Now you want to heat it up really well, but not too long. If you heat it up too long, you're going to burn out the, uh, the paste. Now this is absolutely critical that it draws it in, otherwise penetration. Look at that. Look at that pull it in. There's going to be no leaks on this. See how it just draws it? Let's do the other side. Now actually, let's take a moment. Quiet. Okay. No heat. We've got this. Now watch. Nothing's pulling in. Nothing at all. So it's the combination of three things. A, you need to be clean. B, you got to have the paste in there. And obviously you need the heat and then it draws it in. So just to show now the difference. Nothing's being pulled in. Let's put some fire to it. There we go. Now if you really want to be neat, have some wet rags and you can sort of finesse this up here. Cold wet rags, you can do a little bit of wiping, it cleans the joint and it makes it look really nice. If you follow these, these procedures, these principles, especially the cleaning, you can do any types of solder joints throughout your home. This, you could even solder electronics. If you've got, you know, electronics, gadgets, things you need to solder together, and you're going to have a nice, uh, in the case where it's electronics, you're going to have perfect conductivity. In the case where it's plumbing, you're going to have a leak-proof installation. Now, let's take a moment to recap. It's very important that people understand you have always choices. When you go to the market, you can buy cheap or you can buy the best. Now we've talked about this many, many times. It's not the Ontario building code. It's the Ontario minimum building code. Why is it called that? It's called that so manufacturers can put garbage out on the market. If you ask a builder, he's going to tell you that they have to set the minimum standard somewhere to, uh, to, to accommodate affordable, affordable housing. You ever look to go price a new home? Affordables wouldn't come to mind right, right off the bat. So they simply do it so they can make money. The difference here is $20, $5. Big deal. You're going to spend $15 more, but you're going to have it forever. It's your own home. 
once you cut the overcharging and sometimes crooked contractor out of the equation, you're saving that $15. You're saving hundreds. So try to really put good quality components into your home. So again, it's a matter of minimum building code that they make things you know, there's too much. You can go to any of the big box stores. There's poor, there's good, there's better, there's best. Educate yourself. Go online, email me, check out my website. There's a, there's a multitude of literature out there and you can figure out what the best products are. Learn how to do it yourself. Install it yourself. Now the most important thing to remember, www.justaskbob.com. Pause, forward, rewind, take this show to your own pace. And the entire 10 shows from season one. I'm Just Ask Bob. Thank you for watching. Catch you next time.